Hello Recruit, and welcome to Astroneer Academy 601, Xenobiology. Up until now, our adventures as an astroneer could often be a lonely experience. Unless we had friends to join us, we faced the solar system and all of its discovery, hazards, and exploration alone. Thanks to the research of Dr. Ines Yo and their assistant, now we can befriend gelastropods, also known as snails, and take advantage of the unique benefits that each one provides. Today, we are going to take an in-depth look at how to befriend each snail, how to properly care for them, investigate the benefits that they provide, and discuss the research notes from Dr. Yo that they wrote while aboard the Exo Starship Triton. Exodynamics has updated the mission log on every landing pad, so to get started, you simply need to open the mission log and take a look at the new Bait and Switch mission. There, you will discover that you need to collect three Sphalerite nuggets to unlock, um, well, that is not quite clear given the undecipherable text. You don't actually need to do anything with these three Sphalerite nuggets, mind you. They simply need to be collected to complete this mission. Return to any landing pad to claim your reward and discover that you now have a strange object. I do not believe we have ever seen anything with such an appropriate name. This thing is strange. This tiny little object seems to have a massive hologram that cannot quite appear. Instead, it shimmers with a mysterious energy. Whatever this thing is, it's huge. Thankfully, you can interact with the strange object to deploy it. You will need to be on Silva as it will not activate on any other planet and you need to have enough physical space around it to properly deploy. The hologram will become slightly less translucent once you have it in a place where it will fit. With that done, place the strange object on the ground and interact with it to use it. Suddenly, it will seem as though you have conjured a massive object from a great distance and when everything settles, you find this strange object firmly in place with a bit of terrain flattened and some debris scattered about. The larger bit of debris that appears contains some zinc along with an oxygenator and both of these will be useful very soon. You will also notice that you have completed the strange object mission while two new missions, jumper cables and a breath of fresh air become available. If you investigate this new strange object, you find that it has a control panel, a tier one slot, a power cable, and a space for an oxygenator. You also see what appears to be a power meter, seven display screens that are powered off, as well as a communications antenna, what appears to be seven glass pods, and a large round door. It is at this point that you may also discover that this strange object is actually wreckage from a xenobiology lab that was once used to house and study biological samples. Apparently it is still partially functional and may contain useful information. If you try to activate it via the control panel, you will find that nothing happens. So let's head back over to the mission log on the nearest landing pad. You can claim your power cells as a mission reward for the strange object mission, as well as learning that you need to provide power and oxygen to the lab. You can use the power cells to provide power to the lab, but I would suggest connecting the lab to a stable power source at your base, as you will need to provide additional power to the xenobiology lab later. And of course, you can use the oxygenator in the nearby debris to provide oxygen to the lab. Once you do, you'll be able to tether from the lab and receive oxygen while nearby. When you provide power to the lab, it will begin playing a somewhat broken sounding tune. This music ties into much of our adventure with the snails, and you'll be hearing several versions of it as you befriend each snail. Now, let's head back to the mission log on the landing pad to claim a total of 500 bytes from the two missions we just completed and get our next mission, Know Thy Galastropod. This mission sends us back over to the Xenobiology Lab's data log, also called a control panel, to activate the lab's tracker. In the data log, we learn that they were en route to Lubos Prime. Earlier in the research, Dr. Yo questioned the value of their mission. It seems much was already known about snails' adaptability at the time, and Dr. Yo was skeptical of containment solutions provided by Exodynamics for an invasive species. As we read on, we learn that Dr. Yo is slowly becoming quite fond of her subjects, going so far as to call them the little ones, and admitting they are enjoying their time with the snails. The next entry in the data log remains scrambled, but in entry four, we discover that the ESS Triton has come under attack. It remains unclear who or what attacked the Triton. 
Perhaps this attack was initiated by the anomaly detected by scanners that are mentioned in Entry 2. Dr. Yo has come to realize there is no safe way off the ship for them, but they have prepared to jettison the nursery containing the snails. This entry ends with the haunting words, I cannot save the Triton, but maybe I can save them. There is quite a bit of additional information available in the data log, so I highly encourage you to read through it all outside of today's course. That's right, Astroneer Academy just gave you homework. You will learn about the adaptability of the snails, their evolution, befriending them, and how to care for them. You will also learn about each specimen as they are detected by the lab's tracker. Once you have fully read through the data log, head back over to the mission log of your landing pad to collect oxygen filters as a reward for the most recent mission and investigate the new mission, G. Silva shells. This mission sends us into the forest of Silva to locate and scan five discarded shells from Galastropoda Silva, also known as Sylvie. The shells will appear on your compass if you have difficulty locating them. It is worth mentioning that these shells are also valuable for both research bites and scrap, but we will come back to that later on in today's course. Once you have scanned five shells, return to the mission log to claim your reward of an empty terrarium and unlock a new mission, G. Silva Terrarium. Now you are tasked with creating a hospitable home for Sylvie to live in. This requires soil, which will be a common requirement for all empty terrariums, zinc, and a bounce vine seed. So now you simply need to attach a full canister of soil to the top of the terrarium, removing it once it is empty. Then place one zinc nugget on top, which you can most likely still find in the debris near the Xenobiology Lab, and then provide the bounce vine seed. As you will recall from Astronaut Academy 102, the bounce vine hazardous Florida can be located in the mountainous biome of Silva. Completing all three mission requirements will reward you with a small trumpet horn once you redeem it via the mission log on your landing pad. This will also open up the new mission, G. Silva Recovery. This mission marks the turning point at which you will finally begin to be able to befriend your first snail. Simply place the small trumpet horn on the top of the terrarium and music will begin to play. Soon after, Sylvie will appear nearby. To befriend her, simply perform three abodes for her. While your experience may differ, it seems that Sylvie, along with all the other snails, prefer dance emotes, so it is best to show her your moves. If you perform an emote Sylvie doesn't like, she'll shake her head in disapproval. But don't worry, you can try again. Once you find an emote she likes, she'll burrow into the ground and reappear above ground at a new location nearby. If you have difficulty locating her, a Galastropod icon will appear on your compass to help guide you. You'll need to do another dance emote, wait for her to relocate, and then perform a third dance emote for her. Once all three emotes are complete, you can befriend Sylvie. To do so, simply remove the horn from the top of the terrarium, place the terrarium near Sylvie, then interact with it to befriend her. She will relocate to her new permanent home inside the terrarium. Here you can gaze at her and you can even pet her. You might have noticed that Sylvie can provide a great deal of illumination when fed a seed from hazardous flora. Any seed will do, but Sylvie prefers mutant hispine seeds. We'll talk more about the preferred diets of snails in just a bit. With the recovery mission complete, you can now reclaim Sylvie from any landing pad mission log. This is incredibly handy, and it works for all snails. It allows you to simply reclaim any snail from any landing pad. So if you've misplaced a snail or forgot to bring it along with you, simply head to the nearest landing pad and reclaim it. Now it is time to investigate your next mission, G. Silva Verification. Completing this one's easy. Simply head over to the Xenobiology Lab and place Sylvie's terrarium in the Tier 1 slot above the power cable. This will temporarily move Sylvie into a scanning module, after which her icon will appear on one of the seven display screens. If you previously connected the Xenobiology Lab to a stable power source, it will recharge and you will once again hear a short, broken sounding tune.
You can also use the data log control panel to activate the lab's tracker once again, completing the tracking power mission in the process. If you did not provide power earlier, you'll need to do so before you can reactivate the tracker. Now let's head back over to the mission log on your landing pad to claim your rewards for the verification and tracking power missions, which provide 250 bytes and an oxygen filter, respectively. You can also take a look at the three new missions, Glastropod Care, G Desilo Shells, and G Cavador Shells. The Glastropod Care mission is an easy one. You simply need to feed Sylvie a seed. Any seed will do, and when you do so, you will not only complete the mission and be rewarded with a QTRTG, but you will also see just how brightly Sylvie can shine when she is fed. She will make a great replacement for a work light, base lighting, or even lighting on a vehicle. The next two shell-related missions are much like those for Silva. You need to head to both Desilo and Calador and scan five shells from each. On Desilo, you will find the shells in the craters of the moon, and on Calador, you will find them attached to the side of small slagmites in the rocky caverns. Once you have scanned five of each, you can return to any landing pad to claim your rewards for each mission. Terrariums for the Glostropods of Desilo and Calador. This opens up terrarium missions similar to what you had on Silva. For the Desilo terrarium, you need soil, tungsten, and a dagger root seed. For the Calador terrarium, you need soil, copper, and a weasweed seed. Once you have supplied the necessary resources for the terrariums, you can claim the rewards of 250 bytes for each mission and then begin befriending two new snails. On Desilo, you will befriend Usagi who prefers mutant his spine seeds and can help you locate special items via your compass. I found this ability to be especially useful for locating chess pieces on Galador and Novus, though I also managed to find a zebra marble with the help of Usagi. On Kalidor, you will meet Stilgar, who prefers mutant attack the seeds and provides oxygen. You can place Stilgar in your backpack to provide unlimited oxygen as long as you keep him fed. You can also place him on a platform and create a tether network that will supply oxygen. The great thing about Stilgar is that he can provide you with oxygen, but does not require a power source like the portable oxygenator. Just do not forget to feed him. The process of befriending these two snails is the same as Sylvie. Place the small trumpet horn on top of their empty terrarium, wait for them to appear, and then perform a dance mode. Then head to their new location and do another dance mode. Finally, visit them at their third nearby location and perform yet another dance emote and you are ready to befriend them. Once you have befriended each, you'll need to head back to the Xenobiology Lab on Silva and go through the identification process for each new snail. You can collect your rewards of 250 bytes per snail identification and then begin two new missions. Signal Boost requires you to supply one exochip to the Xenobiology Lab to increase the tracking ability of the lab so you can locate additional Galastropods. I have dozens of exochips that I received as recurring rewards from the Exo Request platform during various limited time events, so this wasn't a problem. If you do not have any exochips on hand, you can head out with some dynamite to blow up some exo crates, or if you have some astronium, you could trade for them via the trade platform. However you obtain your exochip, simply place it in the tier one slot of the Xenobiology Lab and activate its scanner via the data log control panel. This will open up two new missions for Zasanya and Novus snails, and you can claim a 500 byte reward back at the mission log of your landing pad. The other mission that opened moments ago is Wholesome Produce and quite simply asks you to plant a seed to farm for food. Again, we will talk about best practices for feeding your snails in just a few minutes. Once you have planted the seed, you can claim the rewards of a medium storage silo and two proximity repeaters that will aid you in increasing the size of your farm and storing food for your galastropods. Now you have the missions for the Novus and Visanya snails, starting once again with scan five shells of each type. On Vasanya, you'll find the shells in the high hills, and on Novus, you will find them inside of crumbling stones in the caverns of Novus. To reach the shells on Novus, you must first break open the crumbling stones. But don't worry, it's incredibly easy. You simply interact with the stone to extract resources and they break apart, revealing the shell and usually a resource nugget. Then return to your landing pad to claim your empty terrariums and begin filling them with the required materials. For Visanya, you need soil, lithium, and a lash leaf seed, while the Novus terrarium requires soil, iron, and a thistle whip seed. 
Both of these missions reward you with 250 bytes and start you on the journey of meeting two more snails. Once again, the process is straightforward. You place a small trumpet horn on the empty terrarium, wait for the snail to appear, then perform the dance mode at all three of their locations. On Visanya, you will befriend Princess. She prefers a diet of either type of mutant cataplant seed and will protect you from all forms of physical harm aside from suffocation. On Novus, your new friend is Regal. This snail likes both varieties of mutant cataplant seeds and will provide six units per second of power when fed. Both of these snails are incredibly useful. When you equip a well-fed princess on your backpack, you will see something like a blue force field surge around you. No matter how far you fall, no matter how hard you hit the ground, no matter what hazard you meet, you will not suffer any damage if you have princess with you. Though the attack to some Aatrox will probably still blow up any explosive substances nearby. Rogal is quite handy as well. You can use them to provide power to your backpack, a vehicle, or even to your base. In fact, he even provides enough power to single-handedly activate a gateway chamber on Silva. And if you need refreshed on gateway chambers, be sure to review Astro Academy 205. All that's left for Princess and Rogal is a quick trip to the Xenobiology Lab for verification. You are rewarded with 250 more bytes for verification of each snail, and the new mission appears overcharged. Again, if you previously connected the lab to a stable power source, it should automatically recharge once you finish the verifications. That is one third of the overcharge mission completed. The other parts require you to supply two exo chips to boost the tracker once again, then activating the tracker one final time. You will be rewarded with 500 bytes and the missions to collect the two final snails. At this point, you should know what to expect. You'll head to Glacio and Aatrox to scan shells, but this time you're gonna need a little bit of dynamite. That is because the shells on Glacio are found within ice chunks located in the caverns of Glacio. Only dynamite can penetrate those, but they often appear in close proximity to one another, so one dynamite can open two or three ice chunks at a time. Inside, you'll find a shell and typically a resource nugget. On Aatrox, you will need to hunt down and dig up spew flowers that have consumed shells. Your compass may lead you to a spew flower that does not contain any shells at all, and I'm not really sure why this happens. On the upside, several spew flowers will contain more than one shell, so it shouldn't take you too long to find all five to scan, even if you do come across some duds. While you're digging up spew flowers, you might want to collect a few of their seeds as well. You'll find out why in just a moment. Once you have five of each type of shell scanned, return to a mission log at the nearest landing pad to obtain your final two empty terrariums. The terrarium for Glacio requires soil, argon, and a pop coral seed, while the terrarium for Aatrox requires soil, helium, and a spine lily seed. With your terrariums already as comfy homes, you are now ready to befriend Bestifier on Glacio and Enoki on Aatrox. The process is mostly the same as the previous five snails, though you will need to perform a fourth dance emote for each of these. When well fed and attached to the terrain tool, Bestifier will improve the width, boost, and drilling ability of the terrain tool. That means you don't need drills or other augments nor the power required to operate them to bust through any soil type quickly and with a wide radius. When equipped in your backpack, Enoki will enable you to jump higher and sprint faster and reduces the movement penalty when carrying heavy items. By the way, Enoki prefers a variety of spew flower seeds, while Bestifier likes to feed on mutant boomaloon seeds. We are nearing the end of our adventures with the snails, but we have a few more missions remaining. Of course, you need to take both Bestifier and Enoki to the Xenobiology Lab for verification. Once that is complete, you will receive the All Together Now mission. Use the data log to activate the Sonic Ray Hatch, which is a line of seven tier one slots located on the top of the larger portion of the Xenobiology Lab. You have seven snails and seven slots, so you should be able to figure out what to do. Simply place each snail into one of the seven slots to complete the All Together Now mission and be serenaded by your seven new friends.
One last mission will appear called Final Entry. Simply reactivate the data log again and you will be able to check Dr. Yo's Final Entry. Conclusions. In this entry, we learn that Dr. Yo has come full circle on their opinions of their mission and now understands why Exodynamics has chosen to integrate the glastropods into our adventures. The entry ends with Dr. Yo noting that her assistant now is calling and it sounds urgent. Of course, we already know from entry four, SOS, that the ESS Triton has come under attack. All that remains is to claim your final rewards. You will receive 200 bytes for each of the final two verifications, two QTRTGs and the lab suit for all together now, and an RTG for final entry. But we are not quite finished with Galastropods. As mentioned earlier, the various snail shells you can scan are valuable for scrap and research bites. It seems that each one, no matter which planet it came from, produces about one third of a scrap nugget. The snail shells are rather abundant and on many of the planets, quite easy to acquire. If you need scrap, shells may well be a worthwhile approach to getting it. For research, each shell provides a small amount of bytes when you scan them. But if you place them in the research chamber, they take two minutes to complete and reward you with increasing research bytes based on the planet they were found on. Shells from Silva provide 200 bytes, while those from Desilo provide 275. Calador shells give 300, with 350 from Vasanya and 400 from Novus. Shells from Glacio and Aatrox provide 500 and 600 research bytes, respectively. Each snail has a preferred diet, which we discussed as we investigated each glastropod. Granted, you can feed the snails any type of hazardous flora seed to receive the snail's respective benefits. Feeding them their preferred diet, however, will keep them fed for a significantly longer period of time, thus increasing the amount of time you receive their benefits. It is therefore worth your time to collect preferred seeds from their respective plants and create a small garden of each type. You can easily get a good sized garden growing because hazardous flora now drop two seeds each time you harvest them. This means you can quickly double the size of your garden. The proximity repeaters you received in an earlier mission will be very helpful in getting a good sized garden growing in no time at all. Before we wrap it up, no Astroneer Academy is complete without a pro tip. There is one final note for the care and feeding of your snails. When you feed them, you can place another seed on top of their terrarium for later consumption. When the snail is hungry again, they will automatically consume that stored seed and the benefits the snail provide will continue uninterrupted. And now recruit, you are properly trained to befriend and care for your new glastropod friends. This has definitely been one of the longer courses, but there was a lot of information to cover. As you go about your adventures, enjoying the benefits each snail provides, be sure to take a moment to reflect on the work of Dr. Yo and her assistant now, and the sacrifices that were made to ensure our new little friends could be with us. Hopefully, we have not heard the last from the good doctor and her assistant. Before we wrap it up, I have one final item of housekeeping. I wanna take a moment to let you know that I have not forgotten about two earlier courses that are currently missing from our catalog. Astroneer Academy 506 and 507 have met with repeated roadblocks. From scheduling issues, to writer's block, to sheer lack of time needed to devote to such technical courses, they have remained unfinished. I apologize that I have kept you waiting for so long, and it is my hope to coordinate with both Tactile Object and T-Hill very soon so we can bring you these final two automation related courses. But until then, I'm Brandon, reminding you to stay vainglorious.